Hello, and today I'm going to tell you why I think credit cards are an outdated and old-fashioned business model, and why they should be replaced by new, fair and transparent forms of finance. So, growing up in the UK, it wasn't difficult to get a credit card. Pretty much the first moment I got a paycheck, I was offered a credit card. I took my first credit card at the age of 21, and I started to put the odd big ticket transaction on it, like an airline flight. But I noticed, after a couple of years, my behavior changed. I started to buy more and more things I didn't really need, and there was something very alluring about not having to pay immediately. I managed to rack up quite a bit of debt, and at that time, you only had to pay what was called the minimum at the end of every month, so I could roll the balance to the next month. And then every few months, the credit card company would write to me and say, congratulations, we've increased your credit limit, go spend. Then a few days later, a statement would come, and I'd see this growing debt, and I'd feel a bit sick. So one day, I was brave. I cut up my credit card, I threw it away, and I was one of the lucky people that could do that. Many people can't, and I decided to devote the rest of my life to finding a better model that didn't make people feel trapped in debt. So let's go back in time, cast your mind back to 1950, imagine you're in New York in a fancy restaurant, there's a beautiful, posh couple eating their dinner, and then the bill arrives, and the businessman says to his beautiful wife, oh, I've forgotten my wallet. What does he do? That was the eureka moment for John McNamara, the inventor of the credit card. He invented a business called the Diners Club, which still exists today and is very successful. And the idea at that time was for something called a charge card, where the customer could shop through the month and put the charges on the card and pay in one bill 30 days later. It was a very simple concept. It targeted the super rich who hated to carry cash because it messed up the design of their clothes. A few years later, American Express was launched. And then after that, many banks joined the bandwagon. It was a very explosive idea. In 1958, a clever banker in Bank of America said, let's take this mainstream. Let's make this a mass market product. And so they launched the credit card in California to everybody. Not surprisingly, in the first few months, they lost a lot of money. They didn't realize how many people would not be able to repay on time. And so they came up with a new business model. And that model has taken off all over the world. Fast forward 60 years, and here we are today with one of the most explosive business models of all time. There isn't a country in the world where credit cards haven't touched the population. Even in India, where credit cards have been, believe it or not, a relative failure, they still constitute 50% of all transaction volume every month in retail spending. In America, people are literally addicted. 75% of all adults use credit cards, and on average, they roll that balance for two years before they pay it off. The outstanding burden of credit card debt in the US today is $1 trillion. And people report feeling uncomfortable and out of control, as the average credit card debt is the equivalent of a third of their household income per annum. And credit cards are one of the most clever businesses that's ever been invented. And I'm going to tell you how they work and why I think that model is broken and needs to be redesigned. So in any credit card transaction, you need to understand there are five counterparties. Number one, the customer. That's me or you. We just want to buy something. Number two, 
there's the issuer. This could be a bank, or it could be a company like American Express. The issuer has to literally issue the card. They have to replace the card. They have to do the PIN number. They also have to take a lot of risk in case you don't repay. And there's a lot of costs involved in what they do, as you can imagine. Then there's somebody called the acquirer. This is also often a bank. Their job is to acquire the merchants who are going to accept the credit card. They make those horrible machines that don't work whenever you want to pay. And their job is to maintain those machines and make sure as many retailers possible accept them. That's expensive business. And then you have the middleman, the network. The two most famous are Visa and MasterCard. And they are two of the most profitable businesses in the world. Their combined market cap today is $350 billion. So with all these counterparties, there's a lot of costs and a lot of physical infrastructure that needs to be maintained and paid for. And somebody has to pay for that. Now, think about it. The merchant doesn't really want to pay for this service. He could just accept cash, and that's free. So guess what? We pay. The consumer foots the bill. And it is some bill. Last year alone, American consumers paid $200 billion in credit card fees to banks. In some banks in America, 40% of their revenue comes from credit card fees. So why is it so much? Well, they have a very sinister business model. Let me explain. What happens is the bank will encourage you to spend as much as you possibly can during the month. And they'll give you incentive points and loyalty schemes to make that spending more pleasurable. They'll give you lounge access and all the perks of having a credit card. They'll say it's 0% interest-free for the first 30 days. And then guess what? It will get to the end of the month, and they'll tell you, just pay the minimum, pay a small amount, and then you can roll the outstanding. And we'll just charge a small fee on the roll. The truth is, very few people know the cost that they're going to pay on rolling the outstanding balance. And it's a very high cost. And those fees are hidden in the small print. It's not in the interest of the credit card company to be transparent about the true cost of credit. And the credit card company doesn't want you to not roll. In fact, they need you to, to make the whole business work. If everybody paid in full at the end of the month, they would make no money, and the whole thing would topple down. And guess what? Consumers are getting very wise to this. All over the world, young people are ripping up their credit cards. And the reason is, number one, it's not fair. Why should it be that the most affluent people never have to pay any fees? They get all the perks, they get the loyalty points, they get the lounge access, and they can afford to pay in full at the end of the month. And instead, the mass market, the less affluent people, subsidize them. That model is not fair, and customers are turning against it. They also hate the opacity of the business model. People hate not seeing transparent pricing today. Think about the products you use. You want to know what you're paying when you use it, and you want to pay as you go. We're giving up owning cars so that we can rent them. We are paying as we go across our whole lifestyle. And I believe that that's what needs to happen to credit. Fair, transparent, and bite-sized finance is the future of credit. So I'm not saying we should all rip up our cards and that credit shouldn't exist. Money makes the world go round, after all. And we need a certain amount of credit in the system to help people afford the things that they need. When you have that emergency expense, say your car breaks down, or you suddenly have to fly across the country, it's only fair that financing options exist. But they shouldn't be heavy, they shouldn't be burdensome, and they should be fair and transparent. So, 
I moved to India to redesign the way credit is delivered. And I chose India because this is the most exciting market on the planet for what we're doing. So, believe it or not, credit cards in India have actually been a bit of a disaster. In a population of 1.4 billion people, nearly, we have less than 40 million cards in issuance, which means 20 million people are using the cards on a regular basis. That really hasn't penetrated the mass market, and nor should it, because as you can understand now, that infrastructure is expensive, cumbersome, and old-fashioned. Retailers in India don't want to accept credit cards because it's just a hassle, and they don't need to. India is the most exciting market in the world right now for digital adoption. The Indian consumer is consuming more digital data than any other consumer on the planet. They're online more frequently, and they're more comfortable on their smartphones than any other consumer in the West. So what that means is they're very happy to use their smartphone as a form of identification and authentication. And that means this flimsy piece of plastic, this old-fashioned construct, is actually redundant in India today. Mobile payments is exploding, as we all know, and we believe that credit should sit behind the mobile payments ecosystem and be delivered in bite-sized pieces at the point of transaction, alongside the retailer and with the customer's consent. So we've created a technology that breaks down transactions into small installments that people can afford. And importantly, they pay a fee at the time of the transaction, a small fee that's very transparent. This means they never get into that burdensome, perpetual cycle of debt that the credit card companies encourage. It's honest, it's fair, and it's transparent. And I am very proud to say I am one of our biggest customers. I ripped up my card. I never looked back. I have used our product more than 20 times already and it makes me feel in control. I've never paid a late fee, and I've never regretted giving up my credit card. Thank you.